So this is a video I've actually wanted to make for a long time now, um, sort of giving a tutorial for how to get started in Screeps. So Screeps is a JavaScript programming game um, that I found a few years ago and I've used to actually uh, learn JavaScript and build my programming knowledge. The community has been super helpful in uh, helping me to learn new concepts and to uh, push sort of the boundaries of what I know I could do with code. And uh, I feel like it's something that a lot of early developers should check out and definitely use as a maybe a starting point and somewhere to sort of kickstart the journey. Anyway, um, I want to jump in here and sort of explain some of the basic concepts of the game and show you how to set up your coding environment and then uh, go step by step uh, showing you how to play the basic elements of the game. So Scripps isn't really like most games in that there isn't necessarily a set objective. Um, but all players start out the same way. With a new account, you're going to be limited to a single room, and you'll have the option to um, pick your starting location. So I've, I've launched a little private server here and selected this room. If you're n new to the game, what you're going to want to find is this. Um, I'll go back out here to the, the global map. But you can see these small yellow circles, the uh, squares, I mean. These are the energy sources. So I personally like to find rooms that have two energy sources since they'll be more effective in the long run. Uh, the total amount of energy you'll be able to harvest will be higher. Um, so you're going to want to find um, a good cluster of energy sources and then plop down your middle room. So let's go down here and with your first room you'll get a free spawn. So this is what you'll use to create your first creeps and to sort of start, start off your empire. So I've just placed it here in the center of the room. Um, there is a strategy to this, but you know, for this purpose, let's just uh, get it down and we'll get started. So I'm going to go over here to Visual Studio. And I'm going to um, actually find the code itself. So there's a thing here in the game if you're using the Steam client where you'll actually be able to open up the local folder. So I'm going to click on this guy, and I'm going to use um, this to actually add a workspace to Visual Studio. So how you can do this is right here. You can actually paste that in their search bar. And now um, we're in the default code branch. And here is the main of this right here. So the first thing I'm actually going to do is use the tutorial code, which I'll link in the description. Um, but here's the default code that is given by the developers. And I'm going to jump ahead here. Actually, we're going to take this one step at a time. Let's we'll start with section one. So in section one, there's two files. We're going to take this main, and we're just going to copy this guy over into Visual Studio. And then we're going to create a new file. Uh, file. And we're going to put into this file the harvester role. And I'll explain sort of some basic stuff about how this works. Save it as a JavaScript file, and we'll keep the naming the same so there's not an issue. All right, so now we have our main code and we have our harvester. So what this does is if Alright, so I'm actually going to go ahead and, and break this down a little bit. But in JavaScript, there are objects. So most objects either look like these curly braces, or we have arrays. Right? So those are the two object types. If it's an object, typically what you'll see is what's called a key uh, value pair. So in JavaScript, there's uh, in native JavaScript, there's not types. So you have a key here, which is a type string, 
currently. And you have a value that's also type string, but you could have a value that's um, a number. Or you could have a value that is another object. So let's look at this guy here, right? Um, Game.creeps. So I'll link in the description here, but this is the documentation for the game. So let's go over to game and let's select creeps. So game.creeps is an object, so it's these curly braces. And it's an object with keys that are strings and creeps as the values. So it's a hash containing all your creeps with creep names as hash keys. Okay, so what this code's doing is for each one of the names in this object, uh, pass this variable into the function. All right, so understanding that, let's go over to the actual game and run a little bit of code uh, to actually spawn a unit so you can see it in action and sort of understand um, how that's working. So I'm actually going to go to the documentation right here and copy a bit of the code here in structure spawn. Um, so I believe it's spawn creep. But right here is some code to create a harvester. So I'm going to actually copy that and paste it into the console. And it's going to go ahead and spawn a unit. And that unit's going to go over here, mine some energy. And then once it's full, it should go over here to the spawn and deposit it. So this guy's name is worker1. So if I go game.creeps and type in worker1, it's going to return an object of type creep and uh, with a key of worker1. So back to the code over here. What this is going to do is it's going to pass that worker1 into this function right here. And this function, what it's going to do is find the creep object in game.creeps by looking up with that name. And it's going to take this creep object and pass it into this file with this function. So it's going to be the roll.harvester.run on and passing that creep ob uh, object. I'm going to delete this guy. And then go over to roll harvester. So here we have this function called run, and it's accepting a parameter called creep. Um, and this creep is an actual creep object. So this creep object, let's go back over to the documentation. You can look up any of these different objects here, but we're going to actually look at creep uh, store. So the store is like an inventory. Uh, it has a key value pair for each resource that the creep is currently carrying. So you can actually click on this link and read more about store. But let's look at this function, uh, get free capacity. So get free capacity is just going to compare the capacity of the this, uh, inventory itself to the amount that's being used. Um, you could do it for a specific resource or you can leave out this optional parameter, pr parameter and just do the total capacity or the total remaining capacity or how much has been used. All right, let's go back to the code. So here's an if statement. So this is sort of like the logic behind this guy, but this creep has a store value in the documentation and we're gonna see if it's get free capacity without any parameter is greater than zero. So if there's space remaining, run this code. If there's no space remaining, run this code block. Okay, so what's it going to do? Well, if it has no energy, it needs to go find an energy source, collect it, and bring it back to be able to do the next task. So in this case, it's actually going to look for energy sources. So let's go take this a look at this. So creep.room. Okay, back to the documentation. So creep has a room object. So 
creep, no, creep, yeah, creep has a room object right here. And because it has this room object, it can use any of the room objects uh, functions. So it's going to use this one called find, and it's going to do a find for a specific type. So all these constants right here are different things that you can pass into the find function, and it will return a array of this type of objects. And then you can filter it to be more specific. Like for instance here, constant in extensions equals game spawns dot room find find structures that are owned by you the player and filter those by structure type equals structure extension so that's one example so this extensions um, variable is just going to be filled with an array of extensions uh, that are yours in that example here's one where you're going to find hostile creeps uh, so it's going to return an array of creeps that are not yours uh, with a body part attack for this example. So there's one in here called find sources right here and it's going to return all sources. So going back to the code it's going to use that creeps room um, object which it inherits from um, room position to call the find find sources. So this is going to be a list, um, an array of all the sources in that room. And what it's going to do is if creep dot harvest. Okay, so let's go back to creep now. So creep has a function called harvest. So creep dot harvest target equals error non range. So what was the target? Let's go back to Visual Studio's code here. Source is zero. So what was this? This was an object uh, well it's an array of objects that are sources and it's gonna pass the first element. So arrays begin at zero. So first element of that array. So if creep dot harvest the first source equals equals error not in range so if it's not in range then the targets too far away so in order to harvest from a source or a deposit or a, a mineral you have to be within one square else move towards that source. So if this first part returns um, back in the documentation OK, then it, it successfully harvested. So it won't then execute the next line, which is moving towards it. So once it's in range, it will stop moving towards it and just harvest. And it will continue to do that until there's no free capacity left. And then it will move to this block. So creep.transfer. Okay, let's look at this object now creep dot transfer so transfer has a target a resource type and an optional amount okay so back to the code so creep dot transfer to the target of game dot spawn spawn one so spawn one is the name of this right here so there's our name spawn one and just like creeps uh, there's a array of spawns. Um, it's game dot spawns spawn one. So there's an example. And in the documentation, just like for creep, just like for store, you can go over here and look up structure spawn. So here's all the different functions and um, sort of variables associated with. Um, not variables, properties associated with this spawn element. And there's a game element called game.spawns, which has the name of the spawn as a key and structure spawn elements, uh, objects as the values. So just like game.creeps, there's 
um, game.spawns, game.structures, uh, game.market.orders, for instance, for um, the in-game market. So there's lots of different um, uh, sort of objects and arrays of data that can be uh, processed in your code. And all that can be found here in the documentation. But if the creep has energy, then it's going to uh, tr attempt to transfer it to spawn 1. And if it's not in range, it's going to move towards spawn 1. So this is some basic code, but it's not very efficient. And in the next video, we're actually going to look at ways to improve this and cut down on the, the logic and make it more effective. Anyway, um, thanks for watching this one, and I'll join you for the next one.